So we're really excited to have our next guest join us here in just a second. Um, Amy Pippi Boyd is a friend of mine who I've known for about 20 years, and she was recently no diagnosed with triple negative breast cancer, and we're really excited to have her. Amy, are you there today? Hi. What's <laughs> up, Rocker? How are you doing? I'm hanging in there. <laughs> hey, you're awesome. Thanks for being our headliner. <laughs> That's so cool. So I was just telling everybody that you and I met years and years ago, probably about, don't you think it was about 20 years ago? It was about 20 years ago, yeah. Yeah. They're me friends. <laughs> yeah. And so uh, you were aware of my story and my uh, challenges going through breast cancer, triple negative breast cancer. Yeah. And I uh, had heard all about that. And then in January, uh, well, you know, before I get to that, I got to ask you something because I don't want to forget. So your Facebook, Amy Pippi Boyd. Yes. Pippi, talk to us about that. You're a roller derby chick. Is that yeah, tied I, to that? Uh, yeah, I play roller derby, um, or I, I did right before I was diagnosed. I skated for North Texas Roller Derby in Denton. Sweet. And uh, Pippi, Pippi Bomb Stocking is my roller derby name. And Sweet. roller derby actually helped me find my breast cancer. Wow. So it's a, that was a great lead in. So how did it help you find your breast cancer? Uh, in roller derby, your uh, breast area is actual, actually a legal hitting zone. So I, I took some hits, and they didn't seem to heal quite right. So I went in and got a mammogram, had them checked out, and one of them turned out to be triple negative breast cancer. Wow. And I remember this was on January 18th of this year, yes. right? Yes, it's very recent. Yeah. And so when you were first diagnosed, uh, they, they staged you pretty quickly, didn't they? Yeah, stage three. And so what gave them the power to, to just stage you so quickly? What was it about your breast cancer that, that told them it was stage three? Uh, basically, they look at the size of the tumor and whether or not there's any lymph node involvement. In my case, my tumor was over five centimeters, and I did have at least one or two lymph nodes involved, so my doctor staged it at stage three. Wow. And I, I remember when that happened, it was a very scary time for you, huh? Yeah, yeah. And yeah, there's a lot of tests they put you through to find out, you know, exactly the extent of the uh, malignancy. Uh, and thank God it, it's just stage three. Yeah, and we we had talked about it, and, and you hadn't been going for mammograms frequently. And I think one of the things when you and I talked about it uh, that you kind of wanted to tell people is make sure that you are getting your, your mammograms, right? Oh, yeah, for sure. I'm only 43, and yeah. I think they're generally recommending them around 40, age 40. Um, they, uh, were, they were saying 40, and they switched to 50, but doctors still say 40, so definitely I would go at 40 for sure. So it's right around that age where you want to start getting one, but, I mean, look how quickly it got into stage 3. If, if I had caught this earlier, I may have had a, you know, a shortened treatment cycle. Um, right now I'm doing the whole thing. <laughs> yeah, it sounds like it. So how soon after you were diagnosed did you start treatment? Within a week, I had my chemo port put in, which is the, it's a piece of, it's a medical device that they put in, inside you that helps you get the medicine from the chemotherapy faster. Uh, I had that put in within a week, and within 11 days, I was taking chemotherapy. Are you able to, and only show it if you're comfortable, you know, uh, you made the mistake of telling me I didn't, didn't have to avoid any conversation. Uh -oh. <laughs> <laughs> is, is it possible for you to show without, you know, doing anything yeah. revealing show show people what the port looks like i don't know if they can see i don't know if you Let's can see. get it yeah um can like you a little bump right here yeah uh-huh yeah yeah it looks if you took it out it would look like a, a sponge with a wire on it and it's basically where they put the needle in for the chemotherapy um so that it gets into your body faster i right. do know someone that had to do chemotherapy the old-fashioned way where they put it in an IV in your arm and it took wow. her six hours to get her chemotherapy. Wow, and this is a lot So longer. it's really, it, it really helps you get your medicine faster. It's, yep. it's a life-saving uh, device that they put in there. Yeah, I, and I had that done when I went through triple negative breast cancer back in 2010 through 2011. So, and I think we've already talked about, and it's a whole nother conversation, uh, that I talked about a little bit, I believe, in the video that we just watched it when they put my um, 
port in actually punctured my lung and I had my lung it collapse and then that was a whole other thing. So yeah, the, the, it's actually a very important piece to the whole puzzle with chemo and, and being able to give your chemo a lot easier. And, and so what chemotherapy, I mean, I know, but we're telling people who are watching, what's the chemotherapy that you are on right now? So right now it's what they call AC chemo. It's adromycin and cytoxin. Right. Um, adromycin is one of the strongest chemotherapy drugs out there. It's uh, called the red devil. It, it actually is red when it comes out of the bag. Right. Uh, and when it comes out, when you, when you go to the bathroom yeah, later, too. Yeah, you go to the bathroom, too. <laughs> yeah, they, they tell you, they're like, okay, don't freak out. When you go pee next, it's going to just be red. It's the most bizarre thing, is it not? I mean, I remember it really well. Yeah. It's so weird. You're not feeling though. <laughs> yeah, it's crazy. Yeah. Crazy. And then, so after this uh, adriamycin cytoxin, are you going to be doing Taxil? Yes. Okay. I'll be doing 12 treatments of that. 12. Wow, that's a lot. See, when mm -hmm. I when I had it, I had four four rounds of the AC and four of the Taxil. So, yeah. So, how's the, I know you've been going through some challenges with the AC. Let everybody know how that's been going for you. I mean, what kind of so, effects have you had? Yeah, um, my first, my first go round uh, was really rough. Uh, I found out I was allergic to one of the anti-nausea meds, so that made it a lot worse. Gosh. But <clears throat> what they tell you to do is if you're having trouble with nausea and vomiting during chemotherapy, to talk to your doctor. So I did. I talked to my doctor, and she got me on a different schedule with my meds. And that one worked a lot better. Great. And then the next time I went in, they had a patch available. I don't know if you can see it on my arm. I've got it. I've got it secured down with some athletic tape. I want to make sure it doesn't come off, but yeah. it's an anti-nausea patch that's for chemotherapy patients. I'm trying that out this, this go round. It seems to be working okay. Um, is, is it one of those cool, I've seen so many different things, like, um, you know, I think we may have talked about the Nulasta and how, <laughs> uh, like back when I did it, when I went through chemotherapy in, in 2011, um, I had to go like, a day or two after I had my chemo treatment, I had to go back down to the, the chemo center and have a shot of the Nulasta, which is a shot that raises your white blood cell count because chemotherapy uh, kills off white blood cells and you need white blood cells to fight off infection and illness and stuff like that. And so it was actually going back in, getting a shot in my stomach, but more recently they have uh, like a patch type of thing that actually uh, injects it on its own on a timer. It's so crazy. I think it's the coolest thing ever. I know. So is this, uh, this uh, anti-nausea patch that you wear? Is it just a patch, like a nicotine patch, or is it, does it actually yeah. inject at a certain time? No, there's no mechanism inside it. It's just a skin patch like you'd have for the, the nicotine or the like some people have it for pain. Wow. That's so cool, and, it, and it's working really well for you so far? It seems to be working okay. I've only had to take anti-nausea meds one time since I had it That's on. That's so good, man, because I remember at the start it was not, not fun for you. And, and I know I told you uh, when I went through triple negative breast cancer that I experienced zero nausea. And at that time, again, I can't stress it enough, you know, it's been eight years since I had triple negative breast cancer, and so things have changed a lot. But back then, you know, they had me on a regimen immediately to prevent me from getting uh, nauseous at all. So it was totally mm -hmm. different. But I'm so glad to hear that they have you under control with that. So how many, uh, you have like what, one more treatment, is that right? Yeah, of the I have AC? One, more AC, one more AC treatment left. Yep, and how soon after that do you start the Taxol? I get a three-week break. They give you a, a, a what they call a chemo vacation uh -huh. because the AC drugs um, interact with the Taxol, so they want to get that out of your system and before they start you on the next drug. Wow, okay, cool. So that's all be next. And I think when I spoke to you about it before, as far as surgeries go, they're just waiting to get you through all the chemo and then you guys yeah. talk about what the surgery is. I don't know, did you get a chance to catch Dr. Joyce O'Shaughnessy at the beginning? I have not, no. Okay, yeah, you'll have to watch the replay because- I'm gonna go back and watch the whole yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah, because she gave a lot of great information about the order in which they're doing things. Like now everybody's doing chemo first for triple negative mm -hmm. and then they're doing surgery after. Whereas with me, um, it was based on uh, the size of the tumor back then. If you had a smaller tumor, you would have the chemo. If you had a large uh, chemo after surgery, um, so you would have surgery first. But if your uh, tumor was larger, you would have your chemo first and then the surgery. But now everybody's chemo first, then surgery. So it's kind of interesting. So I, I just wanted you to take us back to um, you know, 
when you were diagnosed and kind of let everybody who's watching know like what you went through what, what was that process mentally for you like oh man I mean you you go through and you hear all that you think of all the horror stories of you know people losing their health insurance um, not being able to pay for treatment treatment not working I was so scared I but I knew that I had a better chance of, if I did get treatment than if I didn't right so I I got to admit, I, I at least did it for my family. I wasn't too sure. And I still had a lot of tests to be done to find out the extent of uh, where everything was. Um, there was a lot of days that I just broke down in tears like three or four times a day. And, yeah. you know, I was very thankful to have my friends and family around me to, to lift me up. You know, and I hear that more often than not, that um, how important it is to have that, you know, support group in your life, whether it's your, your family, your friends, maybe church or, or whoever, you know, bandmates, <laughs> you know, uh, roller, der roller derby team, you know, uh, <laughs> just your, your friends in life that, that really help lift you up. And, and like you've started a, a Facebook group, a private Facebook group of your mm -hmm. friends to, to really share with them the details about um, everything that you're going through and it really gives all of us an opportunity to uh, chime in and, and cheer you on as you go through this. It's been a really big help having your, your family and your, your friends around, right? Oh, for sure. And, and my roller derby league, they have been an amazing source of support. And I, I mean, some days like a case of chicken soup will just show up at the door at the house and That's I'm like, so Oh, awesome. somebody said something. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And, and, you know, for people that are going through chemo, a, a lot of times uh, folks are like, you know, what can we do? What can we do to help and that kind of thing? What, what's been aside from the emotional support, like what's something that somebody's given you or sent to you that you were like, you know, that was really cool. This really helped me out going through this. I have a friend that um, goes to church every Sunday, and she lights the candle for me, and I really like that. Oh, wow. That is really awesome. I love that. That's so cool. I, nobody ever lit a candle for me, man. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's such a cool thing, you know? And it's funny because, um, you know, when people ask me, what do you do? Like, they want to send something or whatever, and a lot of times, you know, uh, something people can do they can pray if they're really just you know pray that's one thing that you can really ask for um and then on the more um practical side you know things like um have you had a problem with like your 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 skin drying out really bad and things like that um where you yes, yeah yeah i'm having skin problems <laughs> right yeah yeah, so your skin, a lot of times uh, people may not be familiar. I'll tell them about it just a little bit real quick. But when you're on chemo, uh, it just dries you out altogether. So you, your skin gets really dry. Your eyes get really dry. Your eyes water a lot. So some things that I found to be really helpful were some of the some of the really good lotions and things like that. Sometimes when you're going through chemo, you don't want a lot of really strong smells because all your, all your stuff is like really heightened. So like, like foods don't taste the same or anything like that. Mm -hmm. And really strong smells are just like kind of make you nauseous. So, you know, just some good lotions are a really good thing to get people going through chemo. Um, also like some really cozy socks, like they have those aloe vera yeah. socks are really cool. You know, some of those kinds of things are really great great to have um you know just stuff to, to help you get more comfortable you know another question i was just curious um when i was talking to becky brewer earlier um we were talking about how the experience of going through triple negative breast cancer really changes your perspective on on life in general has that happened for you um yeah like, uh, I, there's like so many more things I think I want to do now. <laughs> yeah. Right. Like, I yeah. mean, is there, are there things that like you've just had in your mind that you're like, you know, wanted to do and you're like, now you're kind of like, what am I, what I'm am not going to run a marathon. Yeah. 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 Exactly. Right. And so you I've think that that's, a half, so yeah. I, can, I can do a full, right? <laughs> yeah, totally, man. And so has that kind of sped up your plans for, for doing some of those things? Like, are you, do you actually have plans to do some of those things that you've put off? Oh, that's so far in the future right now. <laughs> I just I get through this. <laughs> well, 
Like I will, first of all, I have to tell you that that my my dream is to have a 1978 Trans Am, and that's <laughs> one of that's like I think that's the only thing that like when I went through treatment that I was like, what are the things that I've wanted to do that I haven't done? Smoking the Bandit, right? Yeah, <laughs> exactly, dude. I totally want that car. I totally want that car. I really do. I support this dream. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> So, but you know, there are some financial limitations because I do want it to be drivable. So it's not real easy to find a nice, good looking, drivable 1978 Trans Am, you know, but I, I would like to get that at some point in my life. So it's definitely giving me a different perspective. So for those ladies uh, watching out there that haven't gone through uh, breast cancer, especially triple negative breast cancer, what, what would you tell them, you know, like, what, what's an experience that, that you've gone through during this that maybe people aren't familiar with, like something that, that, that you've had to, that's been a challenge that you weren't ready for? Um, first would be to remove my dog from the room. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about that. It's all good. It's not the first dog that's made its way on the program. <laughs> Did you need me to repeat the question? Um, you said, yeah, can you repeat it? No, no, it's fine. Um, so is, has there been something uh, since the moment that you were diagnosed to now that you've experienced as a result of either having breast cancer or going through chemo that was a surprise that you weren't ready for? Oh, I didn't realize how much hair would be falling out. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That was a shock. Um, and it's like you can literally just like rub it off. I yeah. was like, wow. Yeah, you know. Um, it, that was shocking. I think that's probably one of the more uh, difficult things for a girl to go through. Yeah. Yeah, cancer. Totally. Yeah, I mean, and, and, and like the first moment that you realize it's falling out, it's, it's apparent. Yeah, it's like I, I washed my hair and then I brushed it <clears throat> after it dried a little bit and two handfuls of hair came out <laughs> in my hand. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I just had somebody just cut it all off. I had somebody buzz it all off and yeah. wear all these fabulous hairstyles that yeah. I don't have to pain. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, it, it's interesting. We were talking about this uh, earlier, um, I think, with Courtney, is the, the reason, in case people are ever wondering, like, why does your hair fall out? So um, the chemotherapy, it actually attacks fast-growing cells. And so it doesn't, like, pick favorites. It just goes after any fast growing cells. It could be good cells or it could be cancer cells. So cancer cells are fast moving. Um, and so other things that are, are fast uh, moving cells or your white blood cells, uh, things to do with your skin, things to do with your fingernails and things to do with your hair. So you'll see changes in all of those things because they have fast growing cells. So like, I don't know if you've experienced this yet, but when I went through chemotherapy, um, my, my fingernails actually turned brown, uh, not dark, dark brown, but like a light brown starting at the base and just slowly throughout my chemo moving up until my whole fingernails on both hands were like a, 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 a light brown. And then as soon as I stopped chemo, the opposite happened. They started to go back to the normal coloring starting at the base and, and going up. And so that was interesting. And, and yeah, you lose your hair, uh, your skin gets dry, things like that. Um, and it, and you know, the the point in which your hair falls out, it's, it is it is, it isn't ever like you expect it would be. I mean, like when it happened for me, my hair was in a ponytail, and I pulled the hair tie out, and I was like, oh my gosh, a, a lot more hair than normal came out when I pulled. It wasn't like stuck or anything. It wasn't like I ripped it out. You know, I just mm -hmm. slowly. It was loose, and I just kind of pulled it off, and there was a lot of hair. And then I just took my hand and I just went like this. And I was like, what the hell? You know, it was just like, it just came off. It was, and then I was just like, it was just like crazy, just coming off. What like every time off? you, yeah, you're like, whoa. And I remember uh, the person who was gonna shave my head, I like called her instantly. I was like, we gotta speed up the date, man. I can't do this. <laughs> I mean, not because uh, for me, for me, I wasn't, I, I don't know why I wasn't like, um, <laughs> cause my whole life, if you had asked me at any other point in time, do you love your hair? Would you ever have it short? short? I'd be like, no way, man. My hair is always going to be long. I don't like short hair. I want long hair. I was really into my hair. But because I was so focused on fighting cancer, none of that mattered anymore. 
and I was yeah. just like, I was just like, I don't care. Let's get it. I, I, I didn't want to deal get with the mess. <laughs> It wasn't the it wasn't the psychological hair falling out. It was the mess of the hair falling out because it was just like everywhere. It was a giant mess. So that There's part was my bed and my hat, everything. Yeah, yeah. It's just it's just a bigger mess than you you could think of. Have you experienced any uh, neuropathy or anything like that? No, I haven't had any kind of problems That's with great. neuropathy. That's really uh, great. Um, and I think we have a question. Do we have a question from the the audience? Oh well, you start. You changed the topic. But... Oh, it's okay. Yeah, 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 um, yeah. So right now, with your uh, the AC, it's it's really just the hair on your on your head that's fall out. You haven't yeah. had it fall off anywhere else, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, because it, it's interesting to me. Even sitting here talking about this, this is one of those millions of things that I would love to ask Dr. O'Shaughnessy just out of curiosity. But with the adriamycin cytoxin, the A, the AC, um, you lose the hair on your head. However, with the Taxol, at least what happened with me and, and happens with most everybody else, is I remember them distinctly saying this to me between my, my last uh, AC and my first Taxol. Uh, they said, oh, you know, you, you lost the hair, on, you, you know, you lost your hair on your head. I'm like, yeah, and they're like, well, the rest of it's about to come off. And I was like, oh, crap, seriously. So with the Taxol, you lose it all, your eyebrows, your eyelashes, uh, the hair on your arms and you know legs, in any hair on your entire body, in your nose, I'm talking, all hair <laughs> is gone, you know. And I always tell people this because it sounds like I don't know if when I say this to you, if we've talked about that before, or if you knew that that was coming, or if this is yeah, I know it's you. coming. Okay, good. I didn't want to yeah. be like, she's like. <laughs> no, don't be telling me that. Yeah, this, is what, not, this is not gotcha TV. Yeah, yeah, this is not gotcha TV. Um, but, uh, you know, uh, and I tell everybody this when I have this conversation is, you know, it's so funny because, like, you know, like I said, I was so focused on fighting the breast cancer that, that the loss of hair didn't bother me. And it was actually so cool because everything was so smooth. You didn't have to worry with anything. You didn't have to worry about shampooing, conditioning your hair and drying it. You have to worry about shaving le your legs or plucking your chin or, you know, narrowing your, your upper lip or anything, you know, none of that stuff. It was just all clean, soft, everything. It was actually really, I don't know, kind of cool. I mean, I don't want to do it again, don't get me wrong. But, you know, if you're kind of embracing it for what it is, you know, it was actually kind of cool to, to come out of it like that. So. And, and you could glide through a swimming pool like a porpoise. <laughs> 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 Only Dave Curley could say such things. <laughs> well, it looks like we're ending the near of our, our the end of our broadcast, Amy. And it's so cool that you're like the headliner chick, and and uh, you know uh, you're you're really coming across like like a rock star, and like like you're really got a, a firm handle on this, and um, you're gonna kick it in the tail, and, and you got no, no doubts about that, and, and you're just ready to do whatever it takes to, to, to fight through this triple negative breast cancer, huh? I'm a fighter. Yeah, for reals, man. Guys, Amy Pippi Boyd, roller derby chick extraordinaire, joining us tonight. Thank you so much for joining the show, Amy, and uh, helping us bring awareness to triple negative breast cancer. And continue to kick butt, man. You know, personal level, anytime you need anything, hit me up. I'm here for you, girl, and uh, we all love you, okay? Love you, April. You take care, girl. All right, bye. All right, y'all. Man, thank you so much for joining us tonight.